if you had to sum up what it is that attracts women, young women, young lesbians, to transition, is there a neat way you could put that or is it way too complex? I think, I mean, there are a lot of ones that are more common, but everyone's kind of, there's just so many routes to it now. Like I think uh, like decades ago, it was a really strongly lesbians, a lot of lesbians with a pretty similar family of body issues and everything, you know, but now it's just, it's broadening and broadening. And honestly, I think that's going to be a pretty big issue for them to overcome. I mean, the more like, it's, it's one thing for a lesbian to make changes to her body that she doesn't feel good about 10 years later. It's going to be different when there's a bunch of straight women who want to have babies and can't. I mean, that is going, people are going to care about that in a way they just were never going to care about lesbians. And it's going to happen. I mean, it's, they're, it's becoming more and more accessible as a strategy for dealing with, you know, stress around your gender, stress around your body. I don't know. It's, there's just so many routes to it. There's so many things that work about it for people. Like there's like the social angle of like, this is where the people are. There's the whole, it, it has a narrative. You can do these steps and you'll feel better. There's, I mean, for me, a really big deal, a really big draw for it was that like your pain matters in that paradigm. Nobody fucking cared that I was a lesbian. Nobody cared that I was a lesbian. Nobody cared about the ways that was difficult for me. I just, what I, you know, I was, I was a teenager, you know, I'm cutting myself, I'm having all my teenage problems and none of it was making an impression with anybody. And you know, people didn't necessarily like it when I said I was transgender, but it was, I I made a splash, right? (laughs) I got a, I got a reaction that felt proportionate to the level of distress I was experiencing, which I had never achieved, honestly, as a teenager, nobody, nobody was impressed with the suffering. So I think it kind of puts language to the pain of being female that by making it not female makes the pain matter more to a lot of people. That's really interesting. So I know you write about this really profoundly, but no one gives a damn basically about teenage girls. Um, very, very rarely, culturally, we abuse and treat teenage girls uh, appallingly under patriarchy because of patriarchy, obviously, which is why teenage girls are constantly told that they're lying when we're sexually assaulted, that our eating disorders are just selfishness. I mean, all of that kind of stuff. But that the attention and validation that you got as a trans identifying person filled a gap. And so it really challenged me in your book because obviously we see some of those intensely privileged young women who come across as very narcissistic, very attention seeking, very, very kind of, I want to be seen as something extremely special because that's how I've been raised. But I really challenge myself on that reading your book because yes, that type exists, that type always exists, whether they transition or whether they narc and attention seek in other ways. But how you've just described it and how you wrote about it is, it's actually very painful, isn't it? That that this is what, it's it's another form of self-harm, I think is, is what you're saying but one way you will get the attention. Can you just talk a little bit to how that worked and then stopped working for you? Because it, you, as you say in the book, it just stopped working for you at some stage. Right. Um, I can't remember the term for it. I wish I could. Uh, but, you know, there's like that idea that different cultures have different ways of communicating like emotional pain. And you use, you know, people tend to use the one that their culture uses because that's how you get it across. You know, we, we're social animals. We want people to understand. So, yeah, I mean, I think it just functions as a culturally significant in this moment way to communicate pain. Um, what was the other part of your question? I'm sorry. Just how did it stop working for you? So at the time yeah. you got the validation, but then then it started to go wrong, didn't it? Well, I mean, you know, obviously everyone is different. It varies a lot, but there is kind of a a trajectory that seems anecdotally to me pretty common, wherein it feels good while you're making progress, right? Like while you've got the steps in mind and you're making, you know, you're obsessed with the next one, but you eventually achieve it. You're taking these little steps towards it. 
So for me, you know, I did my name change. I took testosterone. I got my mastectomy. I changed my legal sex. I changed all my documents. Once you get to the point where you're kind of done with the stuff you wanted to do, whatever, you know, that person's trajectory is, and you're kind of stabilized, it seems like there's kind of a several year countdown for a lot of people. You know, I mean, once you reach the point that you wanted to get to, a lot of us kind of stall out there <laughs> and if that can, you know, you might not necessarily stop transition, but a lot of people, once they finish the steps they wanted to do experience eventually kind of a shift in perspective about the whole thing to some degree or another.